Hey everybody, welcome to Garden Time with Belle. It is mid-July and that means it is time for another garden walkabout. Those of you who have been following me for a little bit have uh, grown accustomed to me taking you on monthly little garden tours. And so up on our list for today's garden tours on our property would be, I'm gonna take you inside the greenhouse first because I haven't had you in there a while. Let's see what's growing in the greenhouse in the middle of July. It is extremely hot and humid here. It's only 8.30 in the morning. I even have cloud cover, which is such a blessing, but it's warm out already. So uh, let's see what I am doing in the greenhouse in terms of what can I grow? What can I keep growing? How am I using my greenhouse in the middle of summer? So we'll talk about that. And then we'll move over here to my raised bed vegetable and flower garden and see how things are coming along. Recently, I did a video on successes and struggles in the garden, and we all have them, uh, no matter who you are, no matter if you have 11 acres like I do to garden in, or you have a tiny balcony garden. It's just part of it, right? You're going to have things that do great and things that don't do so well, and you can learn from those things that don't do so well. But one of the things that I am really delighted with, and I'm not surprised it's a success, are these planters. You came along with me as I planted up these amazing Aquapot Light self-watering containers. They are fabulous. I probably only have to water them once a week in really, really hot temperatures here in mid-Missouri. So that gives me a break from having to hand water pots. Um, but you can see my very favorite summer annual is growing like crazy. I've got three varieties of Super Tunia Mini Vista Petunias. I've got indigo, I've got white, and I've got this bicolor one. And oh, I always forget what it's called. So anyhow, um, yeah, that's what's growing in here with this gorgeous Gara. First year ever growing Gara, and it will not be my last. I just love what it brings to the center of uh, an arrangement and just the wispy, beautiful, just the little, littlest bit of uh, wind just makes them dance. And so really, really happy about that. So in addition to the big aqua pots that flank uh, the doors to my greenhouse, you can see down here another gorgeous proven winner, Super Tunia Bordeaux. And so I just think the purple and white color scheme is something I haven't done here before. Um, and it's a success. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So I'm going to grab the camera, uh, turn it around, and let's go inside the greenhouse. Time to head inside the greenhouse and let's get a few, a little more of a close up view of how huge these beautiful pots have become over the last couple of months. Just lovely. So let's take a look inside and see what's happening here. And before I show you sort of some of the plants and herbs that I have growing in the greenhouse, just want to talk to you a little bit about the greenhouse. You know, uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that my greenhouse is made by Yoderbilt and it comes pre-assembled. Uh, and I've only had it since August. So almost coming up on a year of owning this amazing space. Uh, you can see my oscillating fan going. That goes 24-7 uh, and is especially important when I have seedlings growing. Uh, this table, all of the shelves were crammed full of seed starting trays earlier in the season, of course, in February and March when I was starting a bunch of plants for the season. But Inside greenhouses, it can get scorchingly hot. So a couple of ways that we get around that where we live is we installed shade cloth. And if I can come in over here, if you can see, let's look out one of these windows. So you can see this is the bottom of the shade cloth. It goes up and over the peak and down on this side. This is a 70% shade cloth greenhouse mega store i'll link it in the description below for anybody that's interested that is essential installing that shade cloth in 
I think we install it in April. We'll take it off in October. It reduces the interior temperature of my greenhouse by at least 15 degrees. And that is really a welcome thing in the middle of summer because if you don't have your windows open and your door open to your greenhouse, it can get scorchingly hot. The other great feature about our greenhouse is, do you see this little um, exhaust window? This is automatic. It is filled with beeswax. When it gets warm outside, the beeswax extends, uh, expands, and it's got a little piston, and it pushes that open automatically, which is super important for letting hot air release from the peaks of the greenhouse. And then the other thing that we invested in that you can purchase through, um, through Yoderbilt is it's optional, but you can purchase an exhaust system. This exhaust fan is set on uh, a thermostat. I have it set to 90 degrees. When it gets 90 degrees inside my greenhouse, this exhaust fan automatically pops on and it sucks all the hot air out of the greenhouse towards the north. So that is just something that I'm learning as a greenhouse grower to make sure that the health of my plants don't get <laughs> that the health of my plants is important and one way to keep them very healthy is to make sure it doesn't get scorchingly hot in here and that there is airflow so let's take a look over here this is my little herb box it's a raised bed garden and right now i've got marjoram in here i've got a couple of types of basil I've got some chives, I've got some rosemary, and I have some beautiful thyme. Uh, check out my recent video on growing herbs and understanding the different requirements. Some are perennials, which means they come back year after year. Some are annuals, some need water, some need less water. So check that out. I'll put a, a link to that YouTube video in the description below. And then here's my little lineup of geraniums. The um, geraniums that I grow from seed, Maverick geraniums. I think Swallowtail Gardens is the site where I get my um, Maverick geranium seed. And those of you that have seen Laura on Garden Answer, she was the inspiration for me trying to grow my own geraniums. And I'm discovering from other greenhouse growers who've done this much longer than I am, that geraniums make the perfect greenhouse flower. They just do so well in these conditions. So as we move down here, I've got, <laughs> this is my experimental bed. So, you know, I've got the herbs in the other bed. So here's the same kind of a raised bed garden filled with some great soil. So <laughs> what I thought I'd do is pop in a couple of little, they were this big, I swear. They were tiny little pepper plants that I didn't think would make it out in the landscape. So I popped them in here just to see what they would do. And yeah, they're doing. Now, I don't know if with the shade cloth, they're going to get enough sun to produce fruit, but I mean, let's check it out. Look at all the blossoms. That blossom means fruit. And if I zone in here, oh, can I get it? Right there is a little tiny pepper. Let's see if I can show you all. So I guess it is working. So we'll see. This is just sort of for fun. On this end, I've popped in uh, some leeks that I started from seed and some onion. And I think this is a, I don't know what that is actually. That's <laughs> one of the flowers I started, I think. So anyhow, I've got some more geraniums up here. Some are in bloom. Uh, I've been on vacation for a week, so I came back and I deadheaded a lot of these to give them a little refresh and recharge. So I bet another week or so I'll have lots of blooms to share. Um, and then over here, some more of my geraniums. And you'll notice this is a geranium. This is a bicolor trailing geranium. It's not got any flowers right now. Uh, and surprisingly, I tried when I started these from seed, um, this variety, I only got one viable plant. I think I tried, maybe I only sowed six to 
12 seeds <laughs> and I only ended up with one plant. So anyhow, right now it's not flowering, but I gave it a little bit of fertilizer yesterday. So I would imagine in a week or so I'll have blooms. And of course, you know, just my supplies and things like that. So that's what's growing inside the greenhouse. Time to head out to the vegetable garden and I'm going to need my uh, harvest basket because uh, you're going to discover there are loads and loads and loads of beautiful veggies that I need to harvest today. All right, let's step in and see what's happening this morning. I don't know if you're like me, but gosh, when you go on a vacation or you're gone for a while, you just cannot wait to get back and check on your babies. And so let's take a little walk about through the veggie garden and I'll show you what's happening here. So of course, in this first bed, my beloved nasturtiums, they are doing really well as always. So there they are. And then this is really pretty much devoted to tomatoes. I am very proud of myself in that all the tomatoes in my garden and all of the pepper plants in my garden I grew from seed. Very first time growing tomatoes and peppers from seed and I would say that's a success. So you might be noticing on my tomato plants the lower um, stems uh, don't have many leaves on them because where I live it's very common to get blight on your tomatoes. It is hot and humid where I live. And so this is a fungus and you can actually see I need to remove uh, these leaves. See those with the, I don't know if I'm getting it on camera, with the little spots and the yellow. So I just remove those and I don't put those in my compost bin uh, because it spreads and Typically, what you will read and hear about blight on tomatoes is because of hot and humid conditions, because probably in this soil, that fungus or blight spores live. And so the general recommendation is that you rotate your crops. I've got more tomatoes over here. I'll show you in a minute. I chose not to rotate my tomatoes this year. So these tomatoes are growing in the same spot as last year but next year they're going to be in a different raised bed for sure the other thing that's recommended to avoid blight it tomato blight is that you uh, make sure you mulch so that when water hits the soil which contains some of the um, fungus or whatever that creates blight supposedly if that soil splashes up on your vegetation then it can of course um, introduce blight into your crop so you can see that I have mine mulch I always mulch with straw you can see that and you know I water my plants by drip I water them from below not overhead but in my neck of the woods this year we had massive rains I mean it has been raining 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 this summer and so you know you could only control so much of mother nature and so i am sure they got a lot of wa overhead watering because it rained a lot i can't control that but i can control my watering um, from below using my drip irrigation system when i can all right let's look at this second bed i've got oh my goodness we're gonna have some feasting I have the little lunchbox red peppers. I've got an orange variety. They are coming on. I've got some basil, of course. And then I've got just a variety of cut flowers. My zinnias, these are the senorita variety. Aren't they pretty? They're a pinky salmon with sort of frilly petals. Let's see if I can get in here. I just think they're delightful. So time to make a bouquet. I've got some um, lemongrass that I use in my cooking. And those of you that came along not too long ago, you'll see I just planted some lavender uh, in this spot uh, just recently. So they seem to be doing quite well. You should also notice that throughout all of my veggie beds, 
I have some basil that I started from seed, uh, planted all throughout. Basil sometimes is a good um, kind of plant to plant in and amongst your vegetables because it repels a lot of pests because of its strong scent. So basil and uh, cilantro, all kinds of um, herbs is great to just intersperse all throughout your garden bed to repel those little pesky pests. All right, so here we are in this bed and I've got some really prolific <laughs> Peppers, Anamine, Anaheim, hot. There's, oh, look at these jalapenos. I mean, look at my hand. That's a big boy. They are really big. And then my serranos, they're doing just great. There's another basil. And then some tomatoes. And I want to show you something. This is a Cherokee tomato, uh, Cherokee purple tomato. So do you see these splits? So when your tomatoes do that, that's usually an indicator of inconsistent watering, meaning that lots of water, lots of rain, in our case, filled those tomatoes faster than their skins could hold, and they tend to split. That's quite common. And so if you can control your water, of course, but I can't control Mother Nature. And that's why this year, compared to last year, Several of my tomatoes have split like that. One of the ways to deal with that is you can actually pull your tomatoes off the plant. You can harvest them early when they're barely showing color. And that way you can control, if you get them in your house and just let them ripen inside, you can control crazy rains like we've had uh, and you know, pests and other things. So anyhow, yep, those are my tomatoes. All right, let's go over here. This is, this is kind of a sad little bed. I've let my uh, cilantro go to seed. I had lots of cilantro here in the spring because it loves cooler temps, but I let it go to seed for the pollinators and also as a repellent. I placed some tubers in the soil here. You all came along with that um, way back in early May, and they're not doing much. Here's one, here's one, and here's one. So we'll see. I also had a bunch of other crops here, green onions, and uh, I've harvested those. So succession sowing, I'm going to put out some more seed today and uh, have green onions very soon. They are a quick, quick crop. Let's see. Let's go on the ex ex exterior. This box this garden box has onions, leeks, rainbow shard, and golden beets. I've been harvesting some of the onions. I'm not harvesting the leeks, of course, because they need to get really big. Uh, I've been harvesting some of the rainbow shard. I've got golden beets here. I've never grown beets before. Growing these from seed. And if we get in here, we can see I want to let that one get a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, they didn't uh, germinate perfectly at all. It looks a little scraggly, but you know, my first attempt, I'll consider it a success because I'm going to have at least a few beets. Come down here to where Jerome's hanging out. Hey, Jerome, he's looking this direction because <laughs> I sowed cucumber seed all through here and you can see, oh, Germination perfect over here. There's one cucumber plant down there and what the heck happened here? I don't know, but I'm going to sow some more cucumber seed in here today. We got some purple bell peppers, aren't these? This baby needs to be harvested pretty soon, I think. Purple bell, this will get yellow. This is a cubanelle red. Look at that funny shape. That's pretty cool. They're getting gobbled up a little bit by <laughs> my carrots, but I am happy, happy that my carrot crop. Oh, let's get in here. Let's see. Oh boy, I think I need a trowel because I see what I might be able to harvest. Do you see in there? I'm not going to pull it because I don't want to break it, but I think I might be able to harvest my first carrot of the season. Huh. That would be wonderful. 
swing around here on the other side for you all and <laughs> I am growing uh, the Florette Farms. Um, she uh, sold some wonderful new zinnia varieties that she and her people have bred called Precious Metals. So they're just now starting to come on. They're really soft, silvery shades of pink and salmon. All right, let's take a look at the sky. Ooh, I better get on with the tour before the rain comes. The other thing I wanted to show you is you came along, uh, chives on this end and chives on that end, and again, cucumbers that'll grow up, up, up this trellis. Over here, we do have some success in terms of dahlias. They are loaded with buds. Don't ask me the varieties because this year I decided I'm not going to mark them uh, because I've grown them all before. I know that this beauty is jitterbug. Look at that. Stunning. Um, so I'm hoping in the next couple days when I come out, I will see more and more color. And on this side of my little narrow bed, I have... Seychelles variety of green beans growing up, up, up. And so you can see it's flowering. Everywhere there's a flower, there's going to be a green bean. I love growing green pole beans, as they call them, because they're so easy to harvest when they're up, up, up. And look how tall that one vine is. It's going over the top of the arch. Recently planted some Thunbergia, Black-Eyed Susan Vine, a yellow variety, which is doing great. The orange variety, Arizona Sunset. Um, so here's the plant, and here's all its vining, but I'm not seeing any flowering right now, but it's looking okay. Let's see, did I show you everything in the veggie garden? I think I might have. Look at this Kellogg variety of tomato. This is my hand, guys. Look at this. Wow. Never grown Kellogg tomatoes. It's a Baker Creek variety, and I will definitely be growing it again. It is, at maturity, kind of a pale orange, and it is delicious. I had a huge one last night with some scrambled eggs. Oh, eggs and tomatoes. Wow. Match made in heaven. Well, it's time to wrap up the July walkabout in my vegetable garden for this month uh, because there are dark skies and I'm hearing a little thunder and I'm expecting rain any second. But before I do, I want to show you another success this year, my vertical garden. Oh my goodness. So excited about this new addition to my garden. Oh gosh. It grows herbs great. This is a bunch of parsley on top, and I've got chives. I've got loads of strawberries. I also have loads of pepper plants. Again, look at, I hope you can see these. This is a sugar rush variety that I grew from seed, and they are loving life here. Now, aren't they interesting? They're a beautiful shape. Um, but they're kind of yellow now, and they will get a beautiful apricot kind of orange color when they're really ripe. So I'm not going to be harvesting those for a little while. But anyhow, oh, could not say enough good things about these vertical gardens. Greenstock is the company I went with, and it's super popular. I will also put a link in the description below for any of you that has a small space or like me, you run out of space in your garden and you need some more growing space. And it, it has been amazing. In this hot, humid environment where I live in mid-Missouri, I'm only having to water this tower about every other day and it is just coming on strong. Couldn't say enough good things about vertical gardening. So you might wanna check that out for your garden. So as always, I'm so happy you came along today. Uh, I've got a lot of harvesting to do, maybe after the thunderstorm, uh, and using these beautiful vegetables in my cooking and sharing them with friends, of course. 
and I've got enough flowers coming on that I think I'll be taking some bouquets to some of my friends next time I see them. So as always, if you enjoyed today's video, I hope you did. Please consider liking and subscribing. Subscribing is really important to my channel. You don't have to pay for a subscription. That's not how YouTube works. Just click that little red subscribe button. And then when you log on to YouTube and I have a new video to share, it'll pop up in your feed and you won't have to hunt for Garden Time with Belle. So thank you so much. And as always, Happy gardening.